So LLMs provide you different hyperparameters that can help you modulate the content generated by the LLMs. Now think of it, if you could control the creativity of the LLMs, if you could ensure that you are able to limit the number of tokens the model generates. Imagine that you could reduce the repeated tokens, encouraging more unique output. Now all this is possible if you are aware about these seven hyperparameters or generation parameters which are available. So I'm going to show you the example with OpenAI, which is right in front of your screen. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get started with number one. The number one that you can see in your screens right here is max token. So, so my number one is max token. So I have given here max token is 500. Now max token parameter controls the length of the output generated by the model. A token can be as short as one character or as long as one word. By setting an appropriate max token value, you can control whether the response is a quick snippet or an in-depth explanation of the ask that you have given to the element. Max token value is getting deprecated in favor of max completion tokens. This is with respect to open AI APIs. Okay, the next thing that you can see over here is temperature. Okay, great. So what is temperature? Now, temperature parameter influences how deterministic or random and creative the model responses are. It essentially is a measure of how deterministic the responses should be. Now, if you give low temperature, like the one that I've given over here, 0 0.1, the model will produce more focused, predictable responses. Now, if I give a temperature of 0 0.9, then the model would become more creative and even sometimes give wide responses. So use low temperature for tasks like generating technical answers while precision is important or where precision is important and higher temperature for creative content generation. So in domains where you need more creativity, UX design templates. So in those scenarios or pushing a marketing content, right? So in those scenarios, it is better to have a higher temperature. But whereas you are writing a technical code, it is better to have a lower temperature. Okay, so we go to the next one. Next one is stop underscore P. Do I get to understand what is stop underscore P? Okay, so if I see stop underscore P, so stop underscore P is also called nuclear sampling. So this helps control the diversity of the responses. It sets the threshold for the cumulative probability distribution of the next token. So in low value, uh, something like 0 0.1, the model will only consider the top 10% of the possible next tokens, limiting variation. Now if I give it a high value, let's say 0 0.9, the model considers a wider range of possibilities of next token, summing up to 90%. So this increases the variability. So ideally in this scenario, I've given it 0.5, which is more of a balanced approach. Next one uh, we have is, top underscore k is equal to 50. Okay, let's try to understand what it is. Now, top k parameter limits the model to only considering the top k most probable next tokens when predicting the next word. So a low value, example, if I've given 10, it limits the model to more printable and constrained responses. And let's say I give a top underscore k equal to 100. This allows the model to consider a large number of tokens, increasing the variety of responses. Now, top underscore K parameter isn't directly available in open AI APIs, but it is available in other platforms. Okay, so now we have just completed our fourth parameter. I'm going to the next one, which is frequency underscore penalty. Now let's try to understand what is frequency underscore penalty. Okay, frequency underscore penalty parameter discourages the model from repeating previously used words. It reduces the probability of token that have already appeared in the output. Now, if I take a low value, like 0.0, .0 the model won't penalize the repetition. But let's say I give the frequency as a high value, like the one that I've given over here. So I've given it as one. Now, this is a high value. The model will heavily penalize repeated words, encouraging generation of new content. This is pretty useful when you want a model to avoid repetitive words, specifically in the field of creative writing. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is presence underscore penalty. So let's try to understand what is presence underscore penalty. Okay, presence underscore penalty parameter is similar to frequency penalty, but instead of penalizing based on how often a parameter is used, it penalizes based on whether a word has appeared at all in the response so far. So now if I give it a high value, this model will avoid using any word that has already appeared. If I give it a very low value, like 0.0, .0 the model won't penalize or reuse words. Now presence penalty helps encourage more diverse content and generation. In my example, I've actually taken a very balanced approach. I've given it 0.5. Okay, so now you have the six parameters. This is how you can actually call the open AI APIs. So you just import the open AI API or the library, and then you, you can actually store your secret key very secretly so that it is not exposed. And then here you 
build your client using mm -hmm. your specific secret key. Here, I have already showcased you that you can actually give your own custom values, and then you can define how your response would look like. So here I'm calling GPT-4 or Mini. I am giving the role and the content. Here I'm saying the role is user, and the content is what is the best fruit in diabetes. Yes, seven fruits low in sugar. Okay, so but then the key thing that I wanted to tell you is this is how you define max token, temperature, you give uh, top P. Top K is not available in OpenAPI directly, so you can avoid that. You have frequency underscore penalty, presence underscore penalty, and then comes the seventh parameter, which I'm going to talk now, which is top. So let's try to understand what is top. Okay, so when we say stop, it's actually the stop sequence. The stop parameter lets you define a sequence of characters or words that will signal the model to stop generating further content. This allows you to cleanly end the generation at a specific point. Very useful if you teach the model to generate content or output until a specific token when fine tuning. Okay, great. So with this, we have covered the seven hyper parameters which you can modulate by giving high, low, or balanced values based on your use case and domain and ensure you get the right response. Again, I thank you for your time and wishing you a happy learning. Thank you.